Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday evening, September 10th, and as always, the thoughts here are just mine. You should visit hurricanes.gov for the official information on all of these storms and listen to your local officials for advice specific to your area. Very busy tropics still, and will remain that way for most of this week. We're going to start with Hurricane Florence here, a big major hurricane now moving west-northwestward toward the southeastern U.S., where landfall is expected in the Carolinas sometime on Thursday, and extreme impacts could occur in multiple states as we head into the mid and latter part of this week. If we take a close-up view of the storm here just before sunset, we can see this motion of the well-defined eye now uh, moving north of due west, beginning that turn toward the southeast United States and we can see this really well-defined eye indicating lots of strengthening that has occurred since yesterday when this was not nearly as well organized and we have indeed seen a lot of intensification from aircraft data showing that pressures fell into the mid 940s during this mission that just left the storm additional readings were made after these three and uh, the pressure has remained rather steady throughout the flight indicating that the strengthening that did occur although it was rapid may have leveled out here a bit over the last few hours and it's interesting to consider why if we look at this visible loop again as well defined as this eye is the inner core convection is rather radially constrained near the eye wall and it's not very expansive in nature over this part of the outer core this normally is an indication of some sort of inner core disruption it's not enough to keep this from reaching its current intensity of 140 mile per hour maximum winds uh, but it may be preventing further strengthening for the moment if we take a look at the microwave pass from a couple of hours ago uh, this showed a little bit of unharmonious structure in the core because we have what is supposed to be the inner eye wall in here only partially formed you can see sort of this band like this but there's an outer band as well trying to form the other part of the eye wall this is not one harmonious circle uh, indicating a closed eye wall in the core and until that occurs uh, this may struggle and this may be the beginnings of the first eye wall replacement cycle it's a little hard to tell but this is sort of hinting at a double ring structure attempting to form so it's possible uh, that we get an eye wall replacement cycle soon uh, or we may just have to wait a while for the eye wall to organize a little bit better uh, as it is uh, still a little bit less than optimal. Either way, this is now a powerful and highly dangerous hurricane, whether it's a category three, four, or five, is not going to matter all that much when it comes down to it at the end. We still have a few days to watch this storm's intensity. Major hurricanes of this caliber tend to be a little fickle in terms of their strength because some of those internal cycles like the eyewall replacements I just mentioned can occur and are hard to predict and can bring the intensity up and down with time. But the bottom line is that Florence is expected to remain extremely dangerous with winds over 130 140 miles per hour for the next few days and no matter what the exact intensity of those winds the primary threats to life and property are going to be storm surge at the coast and rainfall flooding uh, not only at the coast but inland so lots of concerns beside the wind and the wind will be dangerous regardless of its exact value here is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing the same general track that's been here for the last few days, west-northwestward and eventually northwestward toward the coastlines of the Carolinas, and we're really focused in now on either South or North Carolina for the direct landfall. We've sort of excluded Georgia now as being particularly likely to receive a direct hit. It's mostly looking like South Carolina or northward at this point, but keep an eye on things as shifts could still occur. We are still three days out, and there is still room for adjustments to the forecast, but this is a fairly high confidence now uh, that this is going to come in to the southeastern coast somewhere, and odds of it missing are still not zero, uh, but they are small, and we are expecting a direct hit here. And remember, impacts extend well away from the eye's location, so although this, this point where it shows landfall will move right or left a little bit over the next few days, don't focus so much on that as the fact that Florence is going to be a large and powerful hurricane spreading dangerous weather over a large area, and in fact you can see that this wind field in orange here, this has been growing over time a little bit, and Florence is expected to continue getting a bit larger, especially if it has some eyewall replacement cycles which tend to enlarge in the wind field, and this means a broad area of impacts that could extend out 
outside of the cone shown here. Remember, this is not a cone of impact. This is a cone showing where the eye may track. The storm is the size of this here. So this is what's going to be coming ashore and potentially larger than shown here by the time it arrives. And remember, this is not going to be just a coastal event. Storm surge, the primary life-threatening uh, hazard at the coast, wind as well, but even inland, it's about the flooding. And there's a lot of rain expected to come down here. Yellow is almost 15 inches on this map, and it could be much more than that in some places. This is generally just illustrating where the heavy rains will occur. Uh, much more than shown here could fall. And uh, stay tuned to your local forecast products to see exactly what might be expected as we get closer to the event and we have more certainty. But in general, this, this area here could get slammed with uh, momentous amounts of water potentially extending up into the mid-Atlantic states as well. So remember, this will be a multi-day flooding event inland as the hurricane is expected to slow down substantially. You can see here, 2 p.m. Thursday is roughly where the storm is just before landfall, and then 2 p.m. Friday, 2 p.m. Saturday over a two two-day period, this has not moved very much. That's 48 hours during which it's dumping water over this area of the country. So this is something to take very seriously. Even if you're not on the coastline, this is not just a wind event. And in hurricanes, water is the most life-threatening hazard, much more so than wind. In a sturdy structure, you can be safe from wind, not necessarily from water. So pay attention to what your local officials are telling you. Some evacuation orders have already started to be issued, and if one is issued for your location, you do need to go. Storm surge is by far the most life-threatening hazard from hurricanes, and if you're in a zone that is prone to ocean flooding and you are told to leave, you need to go to make sure that you're safe as the storm comes ashore. Very powerful and expected to cause massive, massive life-threatening problems as it comes in sometime on Thursday. Stay safe and be prepared, everybody, in the southeastern U.S. We're going to move on now to the other storms in the Atlantic, starting with Isaac in the central Atlantic, moving westward toward the Caribbean. If we take a closer look at the storm today, we'll see that uh, compared to yesterday, much more disorganized. We actually had an eye forming yesterday, but today that is gone, and we have much more disorganized blobs of convection near the circulation. There's the low-level center may actually be more on the western side here at the end of the loop, indicating that uh, the wind shear currently impacting the system is having a very detrimental effect. And this is a key piece of information now because what was not clear was how resilient Isaac would be to this shear. And uh, the shear that's occurring now is only going to get worse over the next couple of days. So if the storm is struggling with it now, it will likely continue to do so. And this is a strong indication to me that Isaac will not be able to become uh, very strong like some models such as the H Wharf were indicating, uh, but this still could be a hurricane when it arrives in the islands or maybe a little weaker than that. We'll have to keep an eye on it, but the shear is going to be detrimental by the looks of things. This is the GFS 500 millibar forecast on early Wednesday morning. This is where Isaac is. Just to illustrate that, uh, again, east of Florence, we have this ridge sort of nosing its way down into Isaac's area, and this northeasterly flow in the mid-levels is just crashing down into the vicinity of the storm. And remember, if the storm is moving due westward and we have this environmental flow out of the northeastward direction, uh, this indicates wind that is changing substantially with altitude, indicating a wind shear that even even though you might not see it in the outflow level, is definitely there and uh, will continue to prevent Isaac from getting very much stronger than it is now, most likely on its way west. And this is reflected in the NHC forecast as well, keeping this a hurricane as it nears the islands with winds probably around 75 miles per hour at a maximum or so forecasted here. But there is still some uncertainty as to exactly how strong Isaac will be. Could be a little stronger, could be a little weaker. So keep an eye on it over the next few days. But this is expected to be hitting the islands roughly at the same time on Thursday that Florence is hitting uh, the southeastern U.S. And uh, there is also some uncertainty in the track here. If Isaac is weaker as it is currently anticipated to be, it would likely take this nearly due westward track through uh, the central part of the Lesser Antilles, but some models do still try to take this a little bit farther north here, so interest in Puerto Rico and the northern leewards should keep an eye on this still, as there is uh, still some uncertainty a few days out, as rainfall could impact these places even well north of the center of the storm, and rainfall will probably be the primary threat to the greater Antilles if the storm passes close enough by to the south. 
All right, we also have an area of disturbed weather in the Western Caribbean uh, in the form of a, a tropical wave and now developing into a broad area of low pressure. Actually centered somewhere in here is where the vorticity is concentrated in the low levels. There is some shear pushing all the convection and mid-level vorticity off to the northeast. There's this uh, very sharp upper level trough sitting in here aloft and so this is pushing all of that rainfall and convection off in that direction and this whole whole area is going to drift northwestward into the Gulf of Mexico over the next few days and uh, this upper level trough will eventually get out of the way it's very thin and will thus soon break off here and move away and uh, this will move into an area of uh, potentially lighter upper level flow and therefore lighter shear as it moves into the western Gulf of Mexico and it's expected to turn generally westward into this area here towards south Texas and or northern Mexico and this may have a chance to develop uh, given how much convective activity it already has, the fact that there's a broad area of rotation trying to form here, this usually means that by the time it gets into the Gulf, there will be enough left of it uh, to have potential. So odds of this developing at some point have increased, and we could see a tropical storm try to form and move somewhere into the West Gulf Coast, either Texas or northern Mexico. And this is likely to occur in three or four days, again, roughly about the time that Florence is making landfall. So this will be something to pay attention to amidst all all the chaos associated with Florence and we'll be keeping an eye on this part of the United States as well uh, as northern Mexico. 50% odds of development from the NHC right now for this one. And last but certainly not least we have Hurricane Olivia in the Central Pacific. It looks like my loop has stalled so I will refresh it really quick. Uh, this storm continues to persist with rather strong winds. Recon planes have gone in here and it looks like winds may just now uh, be starting to fall below hurricane force and we can see that the convection is now uh, rather disorganized with the low level center becoming exposed and convection limited to the northeast side of the system. This is starting to drift west southwest now and weaken as expected on approach to the main Hawaiian Islands. However, do not lo let the disheveled appearance fool you even if this is not a heavy wind event in the islands uh, it will be a big water event and the winds will certainly be nothing to sneeze at either. There are tropical storm force warnings for the big island uh, up to the islands just southeast of Oahu, Molokai and Maui etc and this will bring potentially strong winds in areas where uh, the terrain causes funneling uh, with the the high terrain, it can be unpredictable, and winds could be quite powerful uh, regardless of what they were when the storm was just offshore. In addition, lots of heavy rainfall induced by the high terrain will be the story with this one, with the potential for flooding, especially in the Big Island, where lots of heavy rainfall tends to occur with any kind of tropical system nearby. So do keep an eye on your local emergency management products uh, to make sure that you're safe from Olivia as well. Impacts could begin as early as Tuesday morning. So we'll be watching all of these storms, Olivia in the Pacific, and all of these areas in the Atlantic where uh, multiple threats to land are currently possible. Isaac in the Lesser Antilles and potentially the Greater Antilles, uh, this area of disturbed weather that could influence the Western Gulf Coast, and Hurricane Florence, uh, a potentially extreme event for the southeast United States and not just at the coast but inland as well with massive flooding expected even after the storm surge and winds at the coast subside. So do stay safe everyone and keep an eye on the official sources of information to keep yourself best informed and safe as these dangers approach. That is it for today. Thanks for watching.